Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Learning Space. Welcome. This is the weekly uh, show from CosmoQuest that highlights um, issues and topics in uh, science education and outreach. And my name is Georgia Bracey. I am the formal science lead for CosmoQuest. And this week I have with me Ellen Riley, um, who works with us to develop all kinds of great educational activities and classroom units to help us bring the good CosmoQuest citizen science activities into the classroom and support teachers as they try to do that. Um, we're going to talk this week about a new unit for the classroom that we're working on called Investigate. Hi, everybody. Uh, and we will talk a little bit more about that welcome. later. This is the weekly uh, show from oh, Cosmo. On. I have I some um, issues and topics in uh, science education mm -hmm. and outreach. And my name is Georgia Bracey. I am the form. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> and here we are again. Okay, good. Uh, we'll work out these technical difficulties as they arise. I have full confidence in that. Um, so what we'd like to do first is invite you guys to um, ask any questions, make comments. We have uh, a YouTube page. Um, you can follow us with the hashtag, um, hashtag learning space. And we will try to track and respond to your comments as you do uh, that today during the show. Um, and also, in general, if you have any questions or want to learn more about our educational um, activities and products that we have at CosmoQuest, we have an email for that. Um, it is educate at CosmoQuest.org. So always feel free to send us an email, ask us a question that way too. Um, so I want Ellen now to go ahead and introduce herself and tell us a little bit about her experience before we talk about investigate. Yes, uh, as Georgia said, my name is Ellen Riley and I am actually a retired uh, junior high science teacher. Spent over 25 years uh, actually in middle school. I started my career in, in high school but wound up in middle school and junior high and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. I think if we get the kids excited about science then they will take more science in high school and then later on in college. Mm -hmm. I have been working uh, since I've retired from the classroom. I've been working with CosmoQuest to develop curriculum for middle school teachers and um, one unit that we did develop, I actually work with uh, Kathy Costello who could not be here this evening, one unit we did develop that is on our website right now is Terra Luna comparing the surface of the moon and the surface of the earth and we're kind of proud of that unit and we've had a lot of teachers pilot that and, and uh, enjoy that unit. So right now we're working on in Vesta Gate, a <laughs> uh, little play on words there, uh, since we are investigating icy, rocky bodies, and we are we have a, a unit that is is getting close to being piloted, uh, getting a focus group together to pilot, and I'd like to address that unit today. It is approximately a 13-day unit, and we have. Um, actually set it up in what the 5E format and I don't know if you're familiar with that but that's essentially you engage the students you let them explore you explain then you evaluate and then there's a, an elaborate if you want to take it further there are activities for elaboration we have uh, aligned this unit to the next generation science standards it is linked to the common core and it is also aligned to the benchmark 2061 standards which are often used by many people internationally. Mm -hmm. um, I would, um, I'll start with actually the first day, I'll take you through the 13, just sort of an overview. Uh, Georgia, did you want to add anything to, to that? Um, no, I think we'll go ahead and, and go through the whole unit mm -hmm. um, and give everybody an idea mm -hmm. of the different activities mm -hmm. that are going to be there, and then we'll focus on a few. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Then, exactly. So, and I'd just, just like to um, preface this with, we have written pre-test, post-test uh, quizzes. Um, it's it's going to be a shovel-ready unit. You can take it and you can you can use it uh, right away, and or you, you can pick and choose what you, what you uh, might want to use depending upon uh, whether or not uh, you have the time to do the entire unit. Right, because just like with Terra Luna, right, so there was 13, Terra Luna was actually 15, 15 days, days. Mm -hmm. um, but in the same way, you know, if you don't have that amount of time, if there's certain activities that address 
um, topics that um, fit better with your curriculum or just something you personally want to have your students do, you can take pieces out of the unit and, and kind of go solo with them, or you can go through the whole thing. Okay, sounds good. Okay. So in, on day one, we want to introduce the students to the solar system, uh, solar system formation because we're not going to have icy, rocky bodies to investigate if we don't have a solar system formed. So basically, we are going to be talking about uh, uh, the solar system formation or accretion. On day two, uh, we, go and we, we talk about the role of gravity, and that's the focus of day two and the activities in day two because we need gravity, obviously, for many of these things to have happened. We go on to day three, and in day three, we're talking about, is it a planet? Isn't it a planet? What's, a, what's an asteroid? What are um, uh, the differences between a planet, mm -hmm. a dwarf planet, an asteroid, a comet, a meteoroid? Uh, and so we address those different bodies. In uh, day four, it's basically asteroids, comets, and meteoroids. Mm -hmm. And we have activities for that day as well. In day five, we're observing the asteroids. So we are looking at them. I mean, how do we find out information about mm -hmm. asteroids? We haven't landed on one. Mm -hmm. So how do we know about it? How do, we, how do the scientists get information that they can in, um, use inference in, in to, to discover what they think the composition is and so on? In day six, we do a cratering activity, which I think students would, you know, they like to bomb everything. So, love so they love craters. So they, they we have a cratering activity for them. Day seven, we have asteroid mappers. So they will be coming to the website then and re, really participating as citizen scientists. They'll be helping classify images that uh, are coming back from uh, from dawn, actually, yay. which has yay, <laughs> which yeah, has uh, the first um, uh, vehicle to to orbit, you know, an asteroid. So that's and all those images are coming back, and there is an interactive activity they can help classify these different images. There's a tutorial, and um, the students actually would be doing real, authentic science, which I think is pretty cool. We move on to day eight. And in day eight, we talk about the composition of asteroids. What are they made of? And uh, we have an activity called edible rocks. You know, they love food. So we, we talk about um, uh, using different kinds of candies and things that they're familiar with, what they think an asteroid might be made of. Uh, we move on to, in all these activities, building their knowledge base and using inquiry, and then we've moved on to the end of the, the unit where we are going to actually concentrate on expedition asteroid. They are going to be involved in technology activities. They're going to be involved in engineering problems mm -hmm. to plan their mission to an asteroid. And when they get there, they're going to have to mine the asteroid for valuable minerals that might be found there and their activities that are involved in that. And of course, we also do address at the end the concept of the universe uh, out to get us. You know, exactly <laughs> what are the what are the what possibilities yeah. of uh, yeah. us getting hurt by a, a meteoroid falling on the Earth and and, and so on. You know, and um, these are junior high kids, so we really can't say we're going. You know, the universe is really out to kill us. I mean, that would be a that would be a terrible it's thing. A They'd probably scary, go home. It's but... very scary for them. But um. It, it's kind of a fun way to introduce it, and then hopefully they will get an idea of the vastness of space and how much how much you know space there is out in space. And uh, then, of course, the last two days of the unit are devoted to a review and uh, a, an evaluation of your post test that you would take. Uh, and so that gives us a, a, a whole overview of what we would be doing for the, the 13 days. Okay. And I just want to add. I want to ask you. Um, sure. That's we have a whole bunch of stuff in those thirteen days. We do. And um, you and Kathy Costello do an amazing job. You did with Terra Luna, and now with this. Um, I just think when you're faced with, you know, okay, I want to develop a three week, basically mm -hmm. three week long activity, three week long unit. Um, how do you start? To actually do that, I just thought I'd ask you. Okay. Can you, yeah, you sure. and Kathy uh, work sure. so well together, well. and you are just like you're the super team. Oh, and she's 
she's flattering. I just thought it'd be interesting for people to hear a little bit about what you think about and what goes through your mind as you, you know, you have the blank paper, or, you know, the blank three-week calendar in front of you, and what goes in there. So okay. just a few minutes, and then we'll sure. get back to Actually, um, I, I so will, actually. actually I what, first, we get a topic, and, and <laughs> if somebody says to us, um, hey, we'd like you to develop... Um, a unit that teachers can use to compare the surface of the moon and the surface mm -hmm. of the Earth. In this case, hey, we'd like you to develop a unit um, to uh, talk about icy, rocky bodies. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, then. And uh, we have Dawn that's sending back all right, these right. fabulous pictures, yes. and we are uh, we have them all on our website. You know, we have a wonderful mm -hmm. classification activity there, and so on. So, what can you do? So what we do is Kathy and I put our heads together and we, we start to research. Basically, we get on the internet and we, we Google like anybody else. And we Google um, asteroids, we Google meteoroids, we Google uh, and, and rocky icy bodies. Mm -hmm. And uh, we find out what's out there because there's absolutely no reason to reinvent the wheel if it's already out there. Right. And very often what we have found is that NASA, which is a wonderful, wonderful resource, already has something that addresses this topic, mm -hmm. and an educational unit that addresses this topic. And uh, then we look at that and we say, okay, what would be important? What would, if our target audience is middle school, what would they be interested in learning? What is their background already? You know, what do they already know? And in this case, you know, the kids know the planets, they know there are stars, they know about constellations, but sadly, they don't have a lot of details about space. It's not in the curriculum, and which is our, it's our job to get it in the curriculum. <laughs> so mission. that's, that's how we, that's how we go about it. So then we, then we, we, we just quickly just jot down um, topics. Um, okay. Uh, we can't talk about rocky, icy bodies if we don't address the formation of the solar system. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we write down words, accretion, gravity, we need gravity, asteroid, planet, dwarf planet. Mm -hmm. um, we write these words mm -hmm. down and then we find activities that are either been developed, um, need to be reworked, mm -hmm. or that we need to write mm -hmm. for, for this. And, and we, you know, we adapt activities and we rework activities and in many cases we actually write our own activities based upon our experience in the classroom. Both sure, Kathy and right. I have spent a lot of years, yes. uh, more years than we have <laughs> in the classroom. In the classroom. So, um, yeah, mm -hmm. so that, does that answer your question? It does, yeah. yeah. So that's yes, how we go you. about it. And we've worked together and known one another, first, both as classroom teachers, for such a long time we can kind of get in one another's heads sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. We know where we're going with different ideas. Yes. So. Finish yeah. each other's sentences, we things sort of like that. Things like yes. That. <laughs> yes. Great. Okay. So we want to highlight a couple of activities. So I thought I'd start with day one. I thought, I thought we'd it. have yeah. a solar system first. That one might be a really nice thing. So um, we have also, in follow again, a play on words. Investigate. This is a mystery. This whole unit, and so mm -hmm. we are presenting this unit as a mystery and, a prob and problems that have to be solved by students. So we start out with the engage part of our, um, our activity. And what I would do, and what we have planned to do, is with the best amount of drama you can as a classroom teacher, you say to them, you have received this picture. I don't know if you can see this. You've received this picture at, in the mail. It's come to you, and it's coming to their lab groups, and it says, important, find out all you can. And that's all. That's all you say to them. NASA needs your help. Well, they're looking at this picture. Some of them may know what it is. Some of them may not. This is just coincidental, not just incidentally. I'll tell you, it is Vesta. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a really nice picture of Vesta. But it kind of looks like a potato. <laughs> And it also kind of looks like a fossil. Mm. You know, it had, it, you could see that there are craters and things on there, but if you really look at them and you're not thinking space, you might think, well, is that a fossil? Is that, what is that? And so you would have the students write in their journal, discuss it in their group, and just write in their journal what they think it is. You don't tell them what it is. You just have them write in the mm -hmm. journal what they think it is. 
And so this is, and I don't know if, if it can we bring it closer. Mm -hmm. Would they be able to see it maybe? If you Let hold just it, bring Georgia. It a little see, bit up see it, here. it's a really, really good picture to get the glare on it. It is a beautiful picture. It is lovely, actually. Mm -hmm. This would be followed by an activity to discuss accretion, basically, how particles in the, in the solar system came together. Big word, they'll love the word, but simply how they came together. So one of the activities, actually there are, we give alternatives. We have actually three activities. One of them, the kids are given different cards, so they are different pieces of space material and you go out into a field or into a large gymnasium and they have to come together and accrete in different, you know, they're given directions. So that is actually a wild, wonderful activity and you may or may not be able to or want to do that with your, with your students. So we've come up with a couple other simpler activities and I'll just demonstrate the simplest one actually. And then it's an old, basically electrostatic, you know, uh, activity where these would be things, chondrites in space, the oldest type of rock, about 4.5 million billion, billion, billion years old, I think so. And uh, they would have an instruction sheet, and they would take a balloon. Um, Georgia, can you reach the balloon? I did blow it up. Uh, it's Oops, over there. You have nice long arms, and I have short arms. So you would take a balloon, <laughs> and as part of the instructions, you would have them put it through their hair. So, you know, like all good science people, I will now look like I'm a mess, but that's okay. So they will do this in their hair in one direction, and then this is a large particle that's in space, <laughs> a little larger than the others, and then they will go near and look at what's happening. They are Accreting, Ooh. they are coming together. Very simple, could even be done as a demonstration. But they are accreting. Oh goodness, they put it in there and more things. <laughs> more things. They're all <laughs> accreting now. Explode. They're going wild. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. So, so it's a very simple demonstration or a very simple activity for them to do, and there are questions that they would answer. But it gets the idea that uh, particles come have come together to form larger objects that we see in space, larger celestial ob objects. And uh, would you like to add anything, um, George? Are you, no, are you good on that. Great. Right. No. So that, that would be our first day when we talk about accretion. And there's another activity also that involves ball bearings and things like that, a little more complicated, and we also, and magnetic marbles, and they also can come together, and it's an accretion activity in a pan, and you could do that one as well. So we've given you three choices which is, um, I think, kind of cool. It's so, really important, yeah. right? All uh, kinds of classrooms out well, there. Well, there are, and you have, <laughs> different, you have different time frames, too. Mm -hmm. uh, you might have block time, so you could do a, a, a very a, a lengthy activity. You might have an assembly that day, <laughs> and you didn't know that and when you walked know. in. And you walked in and said, oh, well, maybe I better do the little styrofoam accretion, because then I won't waste a day, because we don't have time to go to the gym and, and have the kids accrete together. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to do that one. So we do give you choices. Of course, we also have to discuss the very, very important role of gravity, which is which is day two. And we we must discuss that in the formation of, of celestial bodies, formation of the solar system. And we have we start actually by again an engage activity by handing out cards. We call them gravity cards, and I'll see if I can find them here. Here they are. Gravity misconception cards. We don't tell them that. We just give them the facts. And these are cards, and I we printed them out like this. You kind of print them out and paste them and give them to pairs of students. You know, you can have them their desks face one another and say, okay, these are your cards. What we want you to do is read this, and we want you to copy it in your journal, and we want you to discuss it, and we want you to just to discover is this true about gravity or is this false? Have you ever thought about this? And I'll just read off a few of them. Say, read us a couple. I'll read you some. <laughs> Uh, gravity is related to movement, proximity to the Earth, or magnetic fields. True or false? No. no. The moon has no gravity. True or false? 
A galaxy 13 billion light years away is gravitationally attracted to you. True or false? Ooh, that's a great one. I like that one. Uh, the gravitational <laughs> force of the Earth on you is larger than the force you exert on the Earth. True or false? So they'll have to discuss mm -hmm. it and, and decide whether it's true or false. Uh, gravity keeps the planets in orbit around the sun. True or false? Mm -hmm. And of course, one of my all-time favorites, although you cannot feel it, there is a gravitational attraction between you and the person sitting next to you, which could be a boy or a girl, you know, in this age it usually gets a, Ugh. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think so, that's what they'll say. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, uh, they, maybe they'll say yes. So these, this is what we start with. We don't tell them the answers. They have to decide after they do the activity whether they were correct with their, their speculations, with their hypotheses. They have to decide after they do the activity. So we come back to this sort of at so the end. So they come back to it at the end. After when we, when we go, when we, the after the engagement, mm -hmm. enga engagement, mm -hmm. after they engage, after they explore, and then we get into the explanation, and we wrap it up that way. So I, I would just like to, and this is actually just the old classic Galileo uh, experiment. We're going to drop things. And uh, they have a lab sheet. Different lab groups will be given different objects to drop. So they might be given a golf ball, a marble, a, um, a wad of paper. They're given a triple beam balance so that they have to mass the objects and record them in their data tables. So they have data tables to work with and so mm -hmm. on. And uh, we're going to just demonstrate it. And they have to, of course, make a hypothesis. You know, which one do they think is going to land first? We're going to do it here on the desk. Um, in the lab, I would suggest that you do it, have a stool, um, a ladder, uh, measure, obviously, so that you know that each hand that you're holding is exactly the same. I used to stand on the ladder when I did this, <laughs> and I would have kids on the floor trying to see which one landed first, and, and so on. Um, so, But we'll have them each do it from a higher distance in the, in the classroom, but here we'll just do it from the here so that you can see it, and I'll just move these papers. Okay. Very Let's make some room it. here. Let's make some room. Let me get some things I can drop. Uh, oops, let me grab. Okay. So I have here some what guys. Do what do we have? Well, I have a golf ball, and I have a very, it looks like a golf ball, but it's actually, yeah. can you attach oh, it to me? It's, it's kind of false like, golf ball. It's a false ball. <laughs> It's a simulated nice, golf ball. So I shall I drop Very those? light. Very I'll light. I'll drop that one. Okay, so this is light. There we go. And we will so have them. Fun. They would write the <laughs> objects down. They would find the mass of the objects. They would uh, make a hypothesis which one did they think was going to land first. And then they would do the experiment, obviously measuring. So I'll stand up. All right. And I will hold this if people can see no. it. I'm going to try to get them absolutely Good. even and drop them at the same time. Ooh. And not hit one another. Let's try awesome this again. Display. Was that awesome display of, of a lot of things? Of physics. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's try this again. Ooh, All right. You could hear him at the same time. Yeah. We were the practicing time. this and talking and, about how that might be a clue that's, right that's there. That's a clue also. You you're actually really hearing it. it too you well. can't see it, you can yeah. hear it. And that may or may not surprise some of them. I'll sit down now. Um, they have several objects that they will mass and they will they will observe, and then they will take a sheet of paper and an object, and I'll do this, and we'll do the same thing. About the same. Well, what do you know? A sheet of paper floated down. Well, that's very interesting. But then I'll tell them to wad it up. So that it is as compact as they can get it and the same size as the golf ball. I'm wadding this up. <laughs> Let's see. And I will then I will ask them to drop it. Very good. And they Yay. land it they land pretty much at the same time, which is yes. which leads to incredible discussion about the force of gravity and the pull of gravity. And and then you can also throw in a Galileo's experiment, uh, the classic experiment, and give give them a little history there. Mm. And so that's our our second day of gravity.
Um, there we are. I'll bring my papers back so that I. Uh, those, that was the second activity that I was going to do. So, um, good. What are you thinking here? Um, <laughs> I'm wondering if. So, do you know some of the comments that, or remember some of the comments that students come up with, and some of the ideas about? From your own experience about this activity, oh, they don't believe it. Absolutely, they 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 are on. I have to repeat it again and again and again. Um, they are lying on the floor. They're, uh, you know, thinking yes, no, no. I think it did. I think it, this one landed first. So I'm sure no, it didn't. You know, and they they they're um, some of them do know. You know, they 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 watch the Discovery Channel. They they're. Um, uh, wonderfully interested in science and, and so on and so some of them do know some of them just are incredulous that this is happening you know so um, do they give do they offer some explanations some of their own ideas to explain what they see when you know they have a really hard time with that it, yeah, because it's because it's because it's, it's, it's not, not an easy. easy concept they you know one is heavier than the other one is bigger than the other um, one is more dense than the other uh, they they um, with the paper explanation, some of them do come up with air resistance and friction. But they may not call it friction, but they'll call it air mm -hmm. resistance. Some of them will come up with that as an explanation. Yeah. But with why these objects are, are landing at the same time, they they really don't know about objects accelerating to the to the earth and so on. They really don't know that yet. Not at this age, usually. Mm -hmm. But that was that's been my right. experience. They've just had a whole lifetime really of building up. These misconceptions and these, exactly. you know, just from what they observe and what they what they think they're seeing, what they think is going on, and um, when they get faced with an activity like this that actually makes some things explicit that they really haven't perhaps thought about too much before, um, it really starts them thinking. And when they can discuss it with like a partner, right, mm -hmm. or as a whole class. Um, they can start to work through some explanations and ideas as far as what's going on. Right? They can, they but, can, yes. But misconceptions, as a lot of people know, they're really tough to shift. So, you know, it may take more activities like this. You may have students that um, go through an activity like this and then they seem to be grasping the idea. And then a couple weeks later, they'll talk about it, and they'll be back to their original idea, their original misconception about exactly. gravity, because it's just, it gets so ingrained um, in in their mind. And it's, and to them, it's, it's very hard sense, right, it's, it's that to get over that. This and, should not be. This right. should not be. It seems to make so much sense. <laughs> and they have. I, I have actually seen them interview. Uh, college students and, and adults and so on, and ask them this question: If I drop this and I drop that, and I've had the, the well, they'll say, "Oh, this one's going to land first and some will say, "No, they're going to land at the same time." Well, wh why? The, the interviewer mm -hmm. will say, "Because that's what they told me in science class, <laughs> but I can't remember why." They'll say, and mm -hmm. so uh, it's um, yeah. So it, it's it's not an easy concept. It seems it's like it's an easy concept. But it really isn't an easy concept, concept because it kind of defies their their natural, you know, reasoning. Uh, what's their right. natural That's way right. of reasoning? It, really does. So. it does. It does. So, so, so sometimes it takes lots of time to get students to make that shift um, in what they're thinking. It does. Um, but activities like this can help get them engaged and get them involved. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about? Uh, more about the assessment that's built into the into the unit. Can you just sure? Very I will, brief, absolutely. Just very briefly. Very brief. over what we have done is really uh, important. It as is, well. you know, yeah. it, it is really important. Um, and different types of I different know, types of assessment. Uh, obviously, they are going to be uh, journaling. Journaling is an assessment. Um, filling out, collecting data, filling out uh, lab sheets for different activities. That's an assessment. Mm -hmm. They are going to be. Um, uh, doing pen, pen and paper assessments. So we have a pretest and we have two vocabulary quizzes because as we all know when we learn something new it's about vocabulary, vocabulary, yeah. vocabulary very often. That, that is key. Mm -hmm. And so we do have two vocabulary quizzes built in. We have a concept quiz built in. You know, just five questions. Uh, the first I think on day four is our first vocabulary quiz so that we don't have so many words that we are 
uh, different strange words that we're asking them all, all at once. And then we have a concept quiz, and then we have uh, another uh, vocabulary quiz in addition to the um, to the written things that, that, are, that are in there. Uh, I would also like to address that in the elaborate section, because we have linked this to the Common Core, for example, we have um, asked them to research the history and classification of uh, Pluto and Ceres. Ceres, is that how you pronounce it? Ceres, Ceres mm -hmm. yes. Um, we have also um, we have uh, asked them to research Galileo and Newton's ideas of gravity uh, in uh, in a in a which is a link, of, a research link in the, in the Common Core. Mm -hmm. We have put in, um, and I know that art is not in the Common Core, but children love art, and art is a wonderful way to teach science and yes. to, because because uh, it's creative, and, and scientists are creative. And so we have asked them to do an artistic display for a 3D model of Vesta as, a, as an elaborate and a link. Uh, we have math challenges that are in there where they would be uh, doing triangulations to find different bodies, celestial bodies, and doing triangulations using protractors and measurements and so on. We have a geography link in there. Students would research locations of craters that are on the Earth, because there are there is evidence of cratering on the Earth. Um, so they would, they would do that research. There's a, another social studies link where they research uh, the life of um, of Kuiper in the you know why is it called the Kuiper Belt and uh, you know, which is where we find most of the asteroids. So we have all of these links in there as well, so that you could even do this as an interdisciplinary unit with your colleagues if you are teaching on a team uh, in, in following the middle school concept. You you could do this where some of this is actually done. Some of this research and these other things are done in their English class or in their math class and so on. Okay. So we have put those Wonderful. in as well. Wonderful. It gives you a lot of good options for mm -hmm. assessment, um, including a lot of good writing and language mm -hmm. arts connections, mm -hmm. um, which is really important for um, middle school and, and high school as well. So, and any of us, you yeah. know, if you, if you discover something and you can't communicate what you've discovered, then what good is it? You have to yep, be able absolutely. to absolutely, absolutely. So that's that's a big focus now. So it um, it's good to have all those options. And then um, the engineering design, um, mm -hmm. the technology projects, as you uh, mentioned at the beginning, mm -hmm. are in there too. There is so there. that gives mm -hmm. you some more options. Even you know those can also be used as a type of assessment if you want to use a project yes, and have a student's final project be um, an assessment of what they've uh, what they've learned throughout the unit. So and we've put that there. in actually essentially the last two days. So other I think Tara the Luna we had um, our our STEM our engineering activities for every day. And this way as we you know we build our mystery with our you know every day we build our mystery on this uh, you know okay what is this picture and then they learn what it is and then they learn about asteroids and meteoroids and so on. And then in the end they are planning their trip. And that is a lot of engineering and technology. And they will probably will have them designing rockets. They'll have, have them designing uh, craft that can land on the asteroid. Have them uh, figuring out what they would need uh, for their mining community to mine their their mm -hmm. asteroid for different minerals that they might find there and so on. So those are the last two days. So this is also tied into the engineering aspect as well. Okay. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And just to remind people, the core of this project is the citizen science activity Asteroid Mappers with Vesta, mm -hmm. which you can check out now um, by going to CosmoQuest.org and looking for Asteroid Mappers. So you can try the citizen science activity right now as we continue to develop and um, get ready for public, the public um, this uh, unit. So the unit is just being, it's being worked on now. It's sort of in a draft form. But again, if you would like to get more information about it, you can get us, get us an email at educate um, at cosmoquest.org, and we'd be happy to tell you a little bit more, um, put you on our list for our education newsletter, and um, on our list to receive a copy of the unit as soon as it's ready to go. So if you uh, want to get in touch with us about any of that, um, email us at educate 
at CosmoQuest.org. And then go to CosmoQuest.org to try out uh, the Citizen Science right now and take a look at lovely pictures of Vesta from the Dawn mission. It's really amazing. Um, asteroids, can, you know, in a sense, they kind of look like the moon a little bit, but they also look strangely different. So it, it's really a very cool activity. Very cool activity. So this is a great way to get citizen science into the classroom. If you're a middle school teacher, um, if you're an upper elementary teacher, you want to take a look at this as well because there's lots of good activities that um, would work well for that level. And even high school, um, we try to build these units so that they are flexible. There's lots of options. Uh, you can sort of scale them up and scale them down according to um, your grade level. And even, you know, if you're a middle school teacher, you've got that wide range of students. You've got students that are ready for more, and you've got students that maybe um, are still at a more basic level. So good to have all those options. Um, any last words then about Investigate from you, Ellen? You've given no. us a great overview and a nice look at some of the activities. Um, the assessment, um, we mentioned it's connected to the standards, the new uh, next-gen standards, uh, Common Core, and even in the 2061, right, those standards as well. So lots of good standards. Um, I just, uh, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'd I love share. to see. I, I, as a classroom teacher, yeah. very often I would have ideas about, oh, I'd like to do this or I'd like to do that, but I didn't have the time to sit down and actually write all of the activities because, well, as you all know, those of you in the classroom, there were all the parents to call and the students to call and, the, and you know, the 150 kids or 130 kids I had and the papers to grade. And, and so I would try to do things over the summer, but that's why, that's my focus and Kathy's focus. It is to give you a unit that you have. So here it is with the assessments and the objectives and the standards aligned. And so you can run with it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I hope that you will because uh, I'd like to see a lot of space. Uh, kids love space. I mean, let's face it. What are the mm -hmm. two things kids love? Dinosaurs <laughs> and space in, in, in yeah. elementary. And as Georgia yeah. said, you can bring this, these activities down or you can bring these activities up. Uh, very easily. Mm -hmm. the, interest, really the interest is there. So. It is. Uh, we would also love to have any teachers out there who would like to try um, parts of this as we're developing it. Um, we're looking for feedback. Um, we're looking for people who might be interested in doing a focus group to uh, try some of these things and then get together and chat about um, how things went, what might be improved, what you'd like to see, um, how much time everything took all of that kind of thing. So again, if you're interested in being involved with this at all, give us an email, educate at CosmoQuest.org. We'll get right back to you and we'd love to have you help us um, give us some good feedback on our latest unit. So I think with that, we're about ready to wrap up today. I um, want to remind everybody that we'll be back here again next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, Central daylight time in the United States. Uh, we have more Hangouts coming up throughout the week. Our next one is the Weekly Space Hangout on Friday, which is, I believe, happens at 2 p.m. Central Time for the United States here, so that is noon Pacific. And then next week, Thursday, um, a special Hangout with the Dawn team again as uh, Dawn approaches series. So look for more information about that Hangout. That will be next Thursday, um, next week. So again, thanks everybody for watching. Um, give us an email. Let us know if you'd like to get involved with our education here at CosmoQuest. And then we will see you back here next Wednesday at the same time. So thanks again. And thank you, Ellen, for You're coming welcome. in and talking with us this week. Okay, And we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.